So this state opening of Parliament of May 2021 gets underway with the Prince of Wales accompanying Her Majesty the Queen uh, in procession behind the Imperial State Crown, which is the great symbol of the Queen's authority. Duchess of Cornwall just following behind the Prince and Her Majesty. The Queen will uh, enter the House of Lords and in a pattern that is now extremely familiar to Her Majesty, given that this is her 67th state opening, having passed the statue of Queen Victoria, enter the Lords and will take her place on the great throne. And will then give the signal for the House of Commons to be summoned. Crown being brought into the House of Lords, everyone stands. And they will await the Queen's signal. My Lords, pray be seated. signal has been given and it's been received in the central lobby and uh, Blackrod on her way to summon the MPs. The monarch's representative and in the tradition will have to knock on the door of the House of Commons. A reminder of the days when the monarch tried to arrest some members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, the Queen commands this House of Peers. A few words uh, lost there, but we are familiar, of course, with the, uh, the words of Black Rod to attend Her Majesty in the House of Peers. In other words, they are summoned. Sergeant at Arms and Black Rod leading the way, and there we have. The Prime Minister on the left-hand side on the government benches. The Speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, part of this rather small group of MPs making their way today. Prime Minister followed by Sir Keir Starmer, the Labour leader. And there we have... Uh, Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary, Ian Blackford for the Scottish National Party. And I'll just bring Laura in here because normally, Laura, of course, the Prime Minister and Opposition Leader would be chatting and walking together. They would. So this is a very different setup. It's a very different setup. Well, they would be walking together, but sometimes actually not chatting, which was always also rather interesting when you saw the level of tensions between the main opposition and the governing party. But just watching Boris Johnson there with Keir Starmer several paces behind, both of them, of course, in the last few days dealing with the aftermath of a huge set of election results from right across the country. The Conservatives having huge success in much of England, the Labour Party having a very difficult time. 
But that's not to say that the government is also free of headaches. You know, that constitutional argument that we've already been referring to is very much also on the government's mind. But also just interesting to see the new Labour chief whip there, Alan Campbell, yes. in his place with the veteran chief whip, Nick Brown, having been removed as part of this reshuffle and Labour's turmoil in recent days also surely must be on Keir Starmer's mind. So the social distancing very much in evidence. They'd normally be crowded into that central place. My lords and members of the House of Commons, my government's priority is to deliver a national recovery from the pandemic that makes the United Kingdom stronger, healthier, and more prosperous than before. To achieve this, my government will level up opportunities across all parts of the United Kingdom, supporting jobs, businesses, and economic growth, and addressing the impact of the pandemic on public services. My government will protect the health of the nation, continuing the vaccination programme and providing additional funding to support the NHS. My ministers will bring forward legislation to empower the NHS to innovate and embrace technology. Patients will receive more tailored and preventative care closer to home. Measures will be brought forward to support the health and well-being of the nation, including to tackle obesity and improve mental health. Proposals on social care reform will be brought forward. My government will build on the success of the vaccination program to lead the world in life sciences, pioneering new treatments against diseases like cancer, and securing jobs and investment across the country. My ministers will oversee the fastest ever increase in public funding for research and development and pass legislation to establish an advanced research agency.